so today I am installing these Iron Rock off-road flex joints. Uh, they are upper mounts. If you guys followed the build on the axle at all, you'll know that I still have to do these. And then we'll be able to put the axle underneath the Jeep. The weather's been a little questionable lately, so I haven't been able to actually do this for a little while. It's been probably a couple weeks since I actually posted the last video. But I want to get these put in there so we can get this thing moving. These bushings are a little bit different than your standard bushing and how they assemble. I have used them before because uh, I do have the Iron Rock Off-Road long arm, uh, at least the rear kit. I will be doing the front kit, just haven't done that yet. But I do have the long arm rear and it uses these same joints. Slightly different outer sleeve because they're not pressed in. But they are basically the same. So I'll show you guys how these assemble. We'll get them pushed in or pressed in here. Then we'll assemble them because you got to press them in first. They do sell a special tool for doing this, but uh, they also say you can just use a ball joint press. So we'll try that. Hopefully it works. So now we got both of those pressed in. Uh, the instructions do say to tap on this, this thin edge uh, to kind of roll it over so that that locks it in so it won't slide back out. Uh, they are both seated all the way. So this one does seat all the way to this lip. This one seats all the way to that beveled edge. So it is seated all the way, even though it looks a little strange, but it is actually seated in there. So the next step is that we need to assemble this center section and it says to use a lot of grease. So I've just got a marine grease. I like to use marine grease because I like that extra water resistance because I don't want it to just wash out the first time I do a, a river crossing or, or something. So we'll put a lot of lube on this thing, start assembling it together. I got nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build up into Now that that one is assembled, we'll show you a close up of assembling this one. So you can see that these do have a flat side and a cupped side. You wanna make sure when you're assembling these that this ball obviously goes into that cupped side. And same with this one, you got flat side, cupped side. So you're gonna sandwich that thing just like that. Remember to put a lot of lube in between there. So we got one of those slid in there. We're gonna put the lube on here, slide this in, then slide this other one in. We do need to make sure that we're lining up these holes with the holes in here. It's a lot easier to do as you're putting it in than it is trying to spin it while it's inside there. To help align all of this, I am gonna use this outer retainer and a couple of bolts. So I'm gonna slip the bolts through. Keep in mind, this also has a cupped side and a flat side. On this piece, you want the cupped side to be out because you want it to be able to fully articulate out here. That my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy. Take your outer retainer for the other side and remember every other one of these holes is threaded so you want to line up the threaded end with these two bolts on the other side. Now we're going to take the provided allen and try and thread some of these in just to start getting them to catch each other. I got nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build. You can do all of this by hand until you have to torque them at the end but just to speed up the process I'm going to use my impact driver just to snug them down. Much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear that I'm filled up until I can't hear. My mind fills up into a creature. I'm in somewhere much deeper. Because you are working with some strange angles, and you know the axle itself is going to be in your way, sometimes you have to grab one of these wobblies or universal joints, whatever you want to call them, so that you can actually get properly into that fastener and not strip it out. Now you just need to grab your inch pound torque wrench, snug these all to spec, and you'll be good to go. Now that those are both installed, this axle is finally finished being built. So we can get it back under the Jeep in the next video. Hopefully this will be helpful for some of you guys who are buying these joints and need to assemble them yourself. Hopefully you hit that like and subscribe button. We will see you guys very soon.